The second version of our back bench was a big improvement over the first. We had minimal upper storage on the first one, and the bottom was just open shelves, two by fours and plywood. The problem with that was that everything got covered with dust. By closing in the bottom, we're able to keep the dust off the tools, but tools get buried way in the back and they're difficult to find. So I think having full extension drawers would solve that problem. We like the shallow drawers at the top, but because of this overhang, some tools are hard to find, so I can improve on that. The height of the bench is perfect. It matches the woodworking bench. But this front edge is too massive. We thought that we would clamp things or put a woodworking vise, and that didn't happen. So I think I can reduce that. This hardboard top, which has been painted gray a couple times, has worked out well. And when it gets too tough, we can just replace it. The height of the first shelf, this 16 inches, is perfect, but our cords are buried way back here. So I think it would be nice to have a plug strip right along the front of the bench. Now the upper storage, we have these bins, which were really meant for nails. But we only use about hmm, six different types of screws, so we have more space than we really need. And as you can see, we can't get at them because of all the tools. So I think we need to have storage, but less of it. This first shelf stores nails and our Allen wrenches, but what tends to happen with these areas is they migrate. They get bigger and bigger, and everything gets mixed up. So I'd like to have a way to organize it. Second shelf is for some more screws and all our sandpaper. The third shelf is about as high as you want to get. You can just about reach it, and it's for things we don't use very frequently and for a few antiques. It's like an old friend being sent out to the pasture. <sighs> now, where can I find a temporary home for 20 routers? Well, say goodbye to this storage bench. It served us well. I'm going to build the carcasses for our workshop hutch out of three-quarter inch birch plywood. It's a cabinet grade plywood that has a nice veneer on it and it takes paint very well. It's about the same price as the MDO plywood that was on the old unit. Now the first thing I want to do is rip a strip 28 and a quarter inches wide to start making partitions for the base unit. But before we use any power tools, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. The best way to cross-cut large pieces of plywood is to use a straight edge and a circular saw. Now I've installed my sacrificial fence and my dado cutter set up for a little bit wider than three quarters of an inch. I'm going to make a rabbit at the top, bottom, and back edge of each end panel. These four four-inch strips will connect the vertical partitions. This is the bottom edge of one of the center partitions. These notches will receive those cleats. At the top of the center partition, there's a vertical notch for a cleat, which will allow me to attach everything to the wall, and another horizontal notch at the front. Well, now a bit of assembly. Some glue in the notch. Set the cleat in place and I'll attach it with some two-inch screws and pre-drilled holes. Now I've flipped the center partitions upside down and I'm installing the bottom cleats. And finally the top front cleat. Now for the end panels. The same cleats get screwed into the rabbits
that I made earlier. With the assembled carcass against the wall and absolutely level, I can attach it with some inch and five eight screws. Okay, the top of that center partition is nice and level, but it's up off the floor a bit at the front edge. So I'm going to put a little glue on a shingle and slide it in. I dare not use fasteners here for fear of injuring the radiant heating tubes under the concrete. Okay, that's perfect. For the last few minutes, I've started to work on the frame which is going to support the countertop plywood. It's going to be made out of two by fours and all the connections are going to be made with half lap joints. So I've installed my dado cutter in the radial arm at a little bit wider than a half inch width and I've adjusted the height and run some sample pieces to make sure that I'm removing half the material so I get a nice tight joint. With all the layout done on the long pieces, I'll just nibble away the material. It's going to take a little while. For all the short pieces that connect the two long parts of the countertop frame, there's a half lap at each end. I installed a stop block so that everyone would be exactly the right length. Now for some assembly. A little bit of glue on each half lap, and I'll pre-drill for one and a quarter inch screws. You'd be surprised how strong this joint is. We've done dozens of projects with half lap joints. Now I'm attaching the assembled frame to the carcass with some two and a half inch screws. And I've also attached this plug strip right along the front edge. Now this piece of three quarter inch CDX is gonna be the top. Now I'm fastening the three quarter inch CDX to the two by fours with some one and a quarter inch screws. Here's a stack of more of that three quarter inch birch plywood which is gonna be for the upper shelf sections. I have to lay them out for a series of dados and rabbits. I'll do that tonight before I leave. Tomorrow we'll make all the cuts, put it together, and make the drawers for the bottom. Well, I'll tell you this, I can't wait to get my storage area back again. I can't find anything, but hey, we're making progress and it should be ready by the end of the day. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the upper storage system. This is the top shelf, this is the middle shelf, and this is the bottom shelf. Every once in a while you see a wide dado, and that's for these vertical partitions, which divided into three sections. On the end sections, I've made a series of shallow quarter inch dados every two inches for these panels. We can put a panel every two inches, we could skip a few. We'll configure it to the needs we have for our supplies. And let me show you how I made these shallow dados. I set up the radial arm with the quarter inch dado, and what I do is I make my first initial cut across the piece, then I slide it down to the indexing lines on the fence and so forth, all the way down till I get to the end. We don't use our radial arm a lot here in the shop, but for an operation like this, it's perfect. When I'm trying to cut these dados across the pieces, I can see the blade, I can see my layout line, and it's very accurate. If I were to do this on the table saw, it would be upside down and a lot of the work would be blind. And this is a lot faster than using a straight edge and a router. Now let me show you what those grooves are for. These are the ends of our shelf system. Those grooves will receive the horizontal shelves that we just put the shallow dados in. I also want to put some half inch dados right here. Now I may never use them, but it'll allow me to subdivide the space again. With the dado now installed in the table saw, 
I've just run a rabbit down the back edge of the end panel to receive the plywood back. Well, now we're ready for some assembly. A little bit of glue in those shallow dados. And the first thing I'm going to do is install these center partitions with some screws. Here's the middle shelf. Goes together the same way. And I'll angle some screws through. Even though these shelves are only three quarter inch plywood, because of the way I've designed the piece, it'll be as strong as those two by twelves of the old bench. Now for the ends of our shelf system, I'm not going to use screws. I don't really want to see them on the end, and I don't want to go through the trouble of plugging the holes. I'm just going to use some glue and some brads toenailed through the shelf. That'll be plenty, especially once the glue dries. A little bit of glue on the back edge of all the shelves, and I'm ready to install this piece of quarter inch plywood which I've pre-painted to match the back wall. Now this is a critical piece. It adds a lot of structural integrity to the shelf unit. It's going to keep everything together and it's going to stiffen the shelves so they won't sag. The glue will do most of the heavy lifting here and the staples We'll do the rest. With the case flipped over, I've been working on the front side, installing a face frame. I'm using some hardwood. Here it's oak, pieces I had around the shop. Could be cherry or ash. Something strong enough so that it'll reinforce the front edge of the shelves, giving them some stiffness. These pieces also cover the exposed plywood edges. And they hold my petitions in place. Now I have to make a provision to remove these pieces, that's why I'm using screws, so that I can reconfigure my openings. As you can see, there's no effort to reinforce the joints. They're just butt joints. That way it's easier for me to take it apart. All right. Now let's see if we can get this over to the lower workbench. It's starting to get pretty heavy. It's over a sheet of plywood here, plus the back and all the oak. What I'm going to try to do is roll it onto the bench, and then roll it again into the upright position. Okay, now climb under. See if I can't get it up the rest of the way. Whew, that's heavy. Now I am going to use some one and a quarter inch screws and these little trim washers because of the thinness of the quarter inch plywood. I don't want it to blow through. Now the advantage of having solid walls in the shop is that I can put these screws anywhere I want. I don't have to find a stud. Next I want to trim out the edge of this work surface. I'm going to use some more hardwood, some of that oak that I had around. And I've cut a piece that's two and a half inches. It'll cover the two by fours, the edge of the plywood, and I want it a quarter of an inch above the plywood for that replaceable hardboard top that I have. I'll miter it at the corners and I'll notch it around this plug strip. A one and a half inch brad every foot or so will hold it in place. 
Okay, a little bit of glue on the joint. And I've made a little gauge block with a line on it. It gives me the white reveal above the counter. And I'll bring that down the edge and nail it in place. Here's a piece of cardboard that I've notched out the ends to fit around the upper cabinet. And that should just slide right into place. And that's it. It'll stay in place without any fasteners. Now let's build some draws. Well, here they are. Draw boxes on full extension slides that'll carry 100 pounds of weight. And we're going to need that because the tools are heavy. The box is made out of half-inch plywood. It's dadoed at the back, and it's dovetailed at the front for strength. The bottom is also half-inch plywood to support the weight of all the tools. Let me show you how I build them. The first thing I need to do is make a dado on each side piece to receive the back. I'm going to leave the dado height and width the same. I'm going to move the fence to 3 eighths of an inch away from the blade and make a groove in all four pieces for the plywood body. Now I'm ready to start forming the dovetails. You've seen me use a dovetailing jig like this before. The orientation of the pieces is very important. That's why I like to make my groove cuts first. I want to make sure that the inside of the drawer is facing out. So I slip it underneath the clamp and set it in place. Now earlier when I made the other drawers, I set up these fingers to give me a layout for seven tails. I use my router, which has a dovetailing bit and a collar. The collar goes around the fingers, cutting the tails. Now I'm taking some scrap pieces of wood and replacing that side. the top, take out the backer board, which prevented splintering when I machined the tails, replace it with the draw front, inside of the front facing up, slide it forward up against those stops, and lock it down. Okay, now I have to loosen up the finger assembly, pull it off, flip it over, slide it back on, and set it at a half inch, which is the thickness of my stock. Then I want to let this down by loosening these side knobs. Now after checking all the adjustments and making sure it's locked down, I'm ready to route the pins. Now I just flip the front end for end, slip it in, and cut the pins for the other side. Now for some assembly. Glue on the tails and in the sockets. And then I just tap the two pieces together. Now some one inch brads into the back of the drawer. Now for the slides. I found that it's very helpful to make some guide sticks to hold the slide. That way I know it's level and it's in the right place. Bring the slide flush to the front and just attach it with some screws. Now the corresponding part of the track goes on the drawer. A few more screws. Well, now for the draw fronts. I have some three-quarter inch thick birch, and I've put some marks on the vertical partitions. I'm going to line them up and tack them to the box with some brads. All right, for the next one down, I'm going to put an eighth inch shim on top, slide it up against the one I've already nailed on, 
line it up and nail it on. Now you'll notice that the grain matches. I actually took a sheet of plywood and sequenced all the fronts so the grain lines up. Okay, this is the last one. Now I'll secure these with some screws from the inside and then put the handles on. Now here I've taken the time to make a little jig to give me some little pilot holes so I can locate the handle. Well now the fun part, loading everything back in. It's going to take a little while. Well, I stayed last night getting things organized. What do you think? Let me give you a quick tour. Biscuit storage, glue center, belts, a few measuring tools, discs for all my various sanders, adhesive sandpaper in all the different grits, books and catalogs, a few hand tools, loose nails, mallets, all the screws and nails that I use for all the projects, and a couple drills that I use all the time. Now in the top drawers, here we have drill and driver storage. That still needs a little bit more work. And down below, I'll tell you, these full extension drawers are great. The slides are holding the weight well. And finally, a place to hold some of my routers. All in all, this is a very useful project and long overdue here in the workshop. We call it the Workshop Hutch.